Alexander II was a man of contradictions. A liberal reformer, but a ruthless autocrat that encouraged self-government but banned the Ukrainian language. And he tried to give some political power to the people and ended up assassinated for not going far enough. This is how Alexander II of Russia reformed Russia for better or for worse. After the French Revolution and Napoleon's march on Moscow, Russia and its empire was one of the most dominant empires on the continent, and the country was seen as the saviour of Europe. But after the war, revolution and liberal ideas of liberty, equality and fraternity began to spread across the continent. But the Russian Tsar, Nicholas I, was determined to stop liberal ideas and keep a grip on his absolute power. With the secret police, and the puppet master of Europe, Clemens von Metternich, he was determined to stamp out change. He saw the revolts in Europe as dangerous, so he sent troops to help fight it. After 30 years of suppressing dissidents and fighting wars, he got into a war that he couldn't handle against the Ottomans, the French and the British Empire, the Crimean War. With 200,000 casualties, right as the war ended, he died and his son Alexander II became Tsar. Alexander wanted change. He saw how bad the failure in the Crimean War was, along with all the dead men. He knew Russia was falling behind the other European countries, and Russia needed to modernise, and fast, for another war ruined Russia. But there was one major problem in the way of modernisation, the serfs. The serfs in Russia were peasants that worked the land on a noble's property to farm in exchange for housing and some land to grow their own food. Pretty much 80% of the population was serfs, but this wasn't exactly ideal. It wasn't productive. How the hell was he supposed to modernise when everyone was so spread out and can't get off their own land? So we had to free the serfs from the nobles so they can move for work. But the nobles were angry and they needed some changes. Five years later, peasants in Russia Hear the news that Alexander has signed a law about emancipation. But when they actually read what it says, it says you have to wait two years, and since you have to get land from a noble, you had to pay for it over the course of 49 years. The peasants rose up, and the army crushed them. But it was done. In one law, he liberated millions of peasants, even if it took longer than people thought. And now the peasants were free to produce what they wanted, and make money. Well, once they paid off that 49 year debt. Now he had serfs freed, he actually needed to educate them, distribute food, build local infrastructure. So he creates the Zemstva, basically a town council, but this had some bad side effects. At the same time as Alexander was making all these reforms, some nobles thought this didn't go far enough and taking ideas from the French Revolution and the revolutions of 1848, wanted reform, and they wanted it quickly. They wanted land redistribution, and a king with absolute power wasn't going to do it. They needed a revolution to usher in true freedom, and they couldn't have true freedom without assassinating the Tsar. And considering the Zemstva, the town council, was 80% nobles that wanted reform and to change things, this was a really good place to get organised. Meanwhile, Alexander's focus was in another direction, industry, and making Russia industrialised. Russia was a massive country, with a load of resources, but since everyone was so spread out, they couldn't harvest a lot of stuff. Even when they could, they had to transport it, and that wasn't cheap, or quick. So we needed a fast and cheap way to transport stuff across Russia, railways. And he brought in a lot of experts to help build them. Lastly, with all this in place, I can turn to war. The whole reason for reform in the first place was war. So when Bulgaria revolted against the Ottomans, Alexander finally had his chance. So he declared war to try and free Bulgaria from Ottoman rule and have it under his sphere of influence. He did pretty well in the war and got all the way to the walls of Constantinople. The rest of Europe was pretty worried though. Having Russia storm the capital and take it wasn't exactly good for the balance of power, 
So Britain sent destroyers, Russia being scared by Britain, sued for peace against the Ottomans. But Germany, France and Britain made Russia give up a lot of captured territory that he won through military conquests. Even after all his reforms and military skill, it wasn't enough for some people, including the revolutionary nobles, and a revolutionary group, the People's Will, was set up to bring about change to assassinate the Tsar, and trigger a peasant uprising. After four different assassination attempts, on the 13th of March, 1881, one finally succeeded, and he died in the Winter Palace. So, what happened after he died? Well, it wasn't the utopia the nobles thought of. Nobody revolted after his death, and when his son took the throne, seeing how liberal Alexander II was and they still murdered him, he reversed a bunch of reforms and hung a bunch of revolutionaries, like Alexander Ulyanov, and brought in really harsh censorship. His son, Nicholas II, was also pretty hard line, but after losing a war against Japan and being directly blamed for losing a world war, Finally, people did revolt. Leon Trotsky and his friend, Vladimir Ulyanov, later known as Vladimir Lenin, would also try and transform Russia into a utopia. Did they succeed? Well, that's the story for another time. <laughs>